Ableton's Live 12 update got the producer community excited, but I was surprised that the reactions were a bit mixed. While a lot of people were happy and excited about it, a couple of influential content creators criticized the update and thus fueled the negativity in their comment sections and in other online communities. So I figured I would give you my opinion and impressions of the update and quickly highlight some of the more important aspects of it, or at least the ones that I consider important. And in the end, I will give you my advice on whether you should buy it or not. In a nutshell, I think it's a solid update with more additions and improvements than any update in recent years. And even the good old Push 2 got some unexpected love from Ableton's developers. So stick around until the end of the video to find out what new feature it got. And yes, I respect everyone's opinion, so whatever you think about the update, drop a comment down below and let us know. I also ran a poll on my channel's community page and here are the results with around 50% of people being generally positive towards the update and only 30% being negative. One reason people were unhappy was the cost of the update. And yeah, it's not cheap, but live updates have generally always been around the same price. And other high-end DAWs such as Cubase and Bitwig have a similar update cost. And Ableton have always been kind of conservative with introducing new features, with preserving the fast workflow and minimalist user interface being the priority. Which again, some people aren't really happy about it. For me, it's pretty good and I appreciate them taking the time to figure out the best way to implement a new feature instead of creating an overwhelming mess that would make the user experience worse. A quick disclaimer, I'm using the beta version so things may work a bit differently in the final release. So in my opinion, the biggest improvements are about MIDI programming with Life's MIDI clip editor making a substantial leap from what we've had so far. Besides being able to set a global scale for MIDI clips, in the Pitch and Time Utilities tab we can now transpose in scale degrees instead of semitones which can help us stay in key when transposing or there is also a fit to scale button which will correct any out of scale notes. The second tab here are the transformation tools where we have an arpeggiator that actually affects the MIDI notes that we are seeing and it's not just a MIDI effect. Quantization is also integrated in the MIDI transformation tools and you can change the amount at any time with visual feedback instead of having to commit to a certain quantized strength. This is a really wonderful addition. A much needed strum option was added for those realistic guitar or piano chords. And speaking of chords, the third new tab, the generative tools, allows us to create up to four chords per MIDI clip with inversions. The tabs for switching between editing notes, envelopes and NPE have been moved up here and there's a nice shortcut, option tab, probably be alt tab on Windows to switch between them. And this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of MIDI clip improvements, but let's move on to one of my favorite new features and this is being able to scroll through similar samples in the drum rack. With Live identifying similar samples from any folders you've added into your browser. So this isn't just for the stock Ableton Live library. This feature is incredibly useful for making new drum kits and finding good combinations of samples. But funnily, it also exposes some sample packs that just repackage samples from other sample packs. When you come across a sample that isn't similar, but it's exactly the same, just with a different name, you will understand what I mean. And the browser also has this show similar files option. Again, it works for all your sample folders, not just for the built-in content in life. And you have the filters and tags, and this is for samples, plugins, devices, for pretty much everything. Similar to Complete Control and Machines browser, but obviously, unless you take the time to tag all your content, it only works for Live's built-in devices, presets and samples. Live 12 makes the biggest UI changes in recent years or maybe even ever? I don't know, but being able to see the mixer in the arrangement view and being able to see both clip view and device view at the same time is something unheard of in the Ableton world. And no, this isn't clip view as many people mistakenly call it, this is session view and this is clip view. The new rower distortion or saturation device is insanely good on bass and drums. 
and I will definitely be using it a lot. It is super cool. And the new Melt Synth is a really dope addition with some quite out of the box oscillator options. And even though we all have a lot of third-party plugins, I always prefer to use the built-in live devices when I can to avoid plugin windows popping up. And generally, built-in devices use less CPU than equivalent third-party plugins and also make it easier to load projects years into the future when you may not have the same plugins installed. Now, a couple of random additions that I found really useful. We now have freeze and flatten as a single command, essentially converting MIDI to audio or printing any audio processing to the WAV file with a single click. Now, if you're using Push 2, you will be delighted that it works with Live 12, but it also received a new feature that was previously only available on Push 3. The session view can be shown on the display, so you can see the clips in the session view while the pads are in note mode. You can scroll and trigger scenes with the arrow buttons. Or you can trigger separate clips with the buttons above the display. Like I said, this wasn't supposed to be an exhaustive list of all the new features, the improvements to Max for Live, the new tunings, I didn't mention these, and you can check everything from the link down in the video description. So should you buy the update? For me, it's a solid update and considering that I create content, tutorials and Ableton Live packs, I'm definitely buying it as I have to stay on top of things. I don't mind paying 160 euro for this with the 20% off discount for something that that I use regularly and get so much value from. Now, if you're just using Live to make music, the new additions can definitely be helpful and useful. However, if you don't see anything that's really useful and worth it for you and that you really need, you can just keep it. There is no need to be angry about it no one's forcing you to buy the update. And I'm saying this because Ableton maintained OS compatibility for a long time. For example, Live 10 is fully and officially supported on the latest macOS Sonoma, so Live 11 should be supported for several more years. And even this is a problem only if you are on Mac. On Windows, compatibility with older versions is even less of a problem. And you still have plenty of time to decide if they do it the same way that they did it with Life 11. The 20% discount will be available at least until February 2024. Also, if you bought Life 11 recently, like really, really recently, you may actually be eligible to get Life 12 for free. So check your account or check with Ableton's support. And who knows, other much requested features such as built-in stem separation may come as a free update to Life 12. But even if it doesn't, there are so many third-party tools that allow you to do this. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Give the video a like if it was useful, as it helps to boost it with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get future videos into your YouTube feed. Check out my Ableton Life packs from the link down in the video description. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you later.